here's a novelty for anyone who likes that kind of thing. At first glance this just looks like an ordinary strawberry plant until we look a little more closely and find that it is in fact a pink flowered strawberry plant. How about that? So it grows much as a normal strawberry, produces fruits much like an ordinary strawberry. This particular variety does seem to have a longer cropping period. Some strawberries crop very very quickly, you only get two to three weeks of a crop. But here we've got two fruits ready to pick and we've also got a lot of young strawberries still developing as can be seen. And we've still got flowers. So a long cropping period on this particular variety. And I must confess I haven't tried the strawberries yet but they do look rather good and there's a very very nice strawberry aroma coming off these two. So I shall have to try them tonight. Strawberries are probably the easiest of all of the summer fruits to grow as well as being the most popular. They are very undemanding plants and they lend themselves very well to container growing which is why I've got these two plants growing in this pot. You can grow them in raised beds, in containers, even in hanging baskets as well as growing them in the open ground. One of the advantages of raising them off the ground is that the fruits are not susceptible to pests. And of course, it was in order to protect the fruits from resting on the soil that somebody invented the idea of putting straw around the plants so that the fruits didn't make contact with the soil. Which does beg the question, what did they call strawberries before somebody came up with that idea? Perhaps they were just called berries in those days. Whether your strawberries have got pink flowers or white flowers, if you've ever looked closely at these flowers and thought, well, it really does look like a rose, a little bit like those wild roses. Well, you'd be absolutely right. Strawberries and roses are related. Propagation from runners is by far the easiest method. Most strawberries produce runners. Unfortunately, this plant's got quite a nice runner on it, which I can use for demonstration. So as can be seen, there are little embryonic roots coming out the bottom of the runner. So all I've got to do now is take a small pot of compost and put this runner, whilst still attached to the mother plant, don't detach it. We're gonna put this into compost and very, very quickly, those small roots are gonna come large and it's gonna grow into a nice plant. Once this is established in its pot, only then will we cut the runner and therefore detach that plant from the mother plant. So let's have a look at that now. So all we need is a small pot of general purpose compost and a piece of wire bent into a U-shape. And now we can place the runner into the pot. Obviously it's better that you do this in a position where once you've done it you can leave it. Carrying the plant and two pots around is not easy but okay here we go and now we add the u-shaped wire to pin that down, hold that in place and that's it. That's all you need to do. Now just give this a good watering um, and keep it moist. Now, ideally, we should remove these flowers so that this runner puts its energy into growing and producing more leaves and we'll have a better plant next year, which will give a better crop. But I'm a big kid at heart, so I'm not going to do that. I want the strawberries. So I want the strawberries more, and it does mean I'm going to have to give this runner a little bit more TLC once the uh, fruiting has completed in order to get this up to a good size for next year but I'm confident I can do that and I can have the strawberries as well. <laughs> 